Hello, Oathbreakers and Planeswalkers of the Internet. Today I have an Archangel Elspeth deck for you out of the new March of the Machines set. I hope you enjoy. Let me move this. So here we go. Sorry about that. I'm uh, trying a new setup to make these videos faster, more efficient, get the content to you. So let's just jump right on into the deck tech to help with that. Today we're talking about Archangel Elspeth. For two and two white, she is a legendary Planeswalker Elspeth that enters play with four loyalty counters. If we plus one her, we can create a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. If we minus two her, we can put a one one counter on target creature and it becomes an angel in addition to its other types and gains flying, which is really good for tribal. I think I'm going to stick closer to the tribal soldiers thing because that's just what Elsbeth's to do historically if you look at some of her other cards. Her minus six is to return to the battlefield all permanent cards with mana value three or less. So I'm going to build with that in mind and pick other cards that are going to let me capitalize on that effect if I ever can get her to six. The big trick to getting her to six is not using her make angels ability unless you have to, but there is a 1-1 one, one counter strategy in this deck because I love that ability anyway. The signature spell I chose is a signature spell right out of March of the Machines called Aerial Boost. For one in a white, we can make a creature plus two plus two and flying until the end of turn. It's almost exactly like her middle ability actually. Uh, the big bonus to this being our signature spell is it's not threatening. And since it has Convoke, we can tap our creatures to pay the tax on it late in the game. Being able to suddenly make a flyer to knock one of our opponents out by tapping down creatures is really good, actually. And since we can use Elsbeth to make 1-1 one, one Soldier tokens, we can actually use her plus one ability to fuel our ability to recast a spell over and over into the late game. Next, we have a Basari Ket. He's the only other Planeswalker in this deck. He costs one and two white. His plus one is to put a 1-1 one, one counter up to one target creature, make it indestructible until end of turn. Really good way to make it not worthwhile for our opponents to block some of our creatures. It feeds into the 1-1 one, one counter strategy I mentioned. So it's just a good card. I think it's going to really fit my strategy well. His minus two is whenever one or more non-token creatures attack this turn, we create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. This will allow us to go wide if we find we don't need Basari. I'll probably use his plus one more often than his minus two, but it is really good. His minus six is we get an emblem that says at the beginning of combat on our turn, we create a one one soldier creature token, and then we put a one one counter on each creature we control. Because our um, emblem abilities, or our big abilities on these planeswalkers are so powerful, I am running a small suite of proliferate cards. And because we want to be able to recast Elspeth and her signature spell over and over again, I made sure that I'm running plenty of ramp in white to make sure this happens. So you're going to see a lot of white ramp and card draw in the deck tech proper. Asban Battle Priest costs three and a white, has outlast, so he lets us put 1-1 one -one counters on him. And he gives our other uh, creatures with 1-1 one -one counters on them a life blink. Being able to buy back some life is good in Oathbreaker. Sometimes that's the little bit of extra you need just to outpace opponents. Asban Falconeer does the same thing, except he gives all of our creatures with 1-1 one -one counters flying instead. Abnok Bonkin also has Outlast, and he says each creature we control with a 1-1 one -one counter on it gets First Strike, which is just amazing. So you can see how these Outlast creatures from, this one's from Double Masters, but the other ones were for, uh, I want to say Thrones of Tarkir, or one of the Tarkir sets, are just very good in 1-1 one -one counter strategy decks. Anafenza Kintree Spirit costs two. She's a 2-2, two, two, sorry, costs two white and is a 2-2 two, two legendary creature spirit soldier. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, we bolster one, which means we put a 1-1 one, one counter on the creature we control with the lowest power. Cartographer's Cock costs one and white. It's a 2-1 with flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player that controls more lands than us, we can return it to our hand, go search our library for a planes card, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Dusk Legion Zealot for one in white is a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance. says whenever we put a 1-1 one -one counter on it, we get to draw a card, but we can only trigger that ability once per turn. If we can find a way to trigger this on our opponent's turns, it's extra card draw. Esper Sentinel for one white is a 1-1. One -one. 
that whenever our opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, they have to pay a tax. If they fail to, then we get to draw a card that tax is equal to Esper Sentinel's power. By putting 1-1 counters on Esper Sentinel, we can make it harder for our opponents to want to pay that tax, and more likely that we're going to get to draw all the cards. Grateful Apparition for 1 and a white is a 1-1 Flying Spirit that whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we get to proliferate. Helia of the Sun Crown for 2 and a white is an indestructible 5-5 that doesn't actually count as a creature until you have 5 mana pips amongst your cards. Your devotion white has to be 5 or greater. Whenever you gain life, you can put a 1-1 counter on target creature or enchantment you control, and if you pay 1 in a white, you can give a creature a uh, lifelink until the end of turn. Keeper of the Accord for 3 in a white is a human soldier. It's a 3-4. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more creatures than you, you make a 1-1 one, one soldier. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more lands than you, then you get to search a library for a planes card and put onto the battlefield tapped. This card is a great equalizer that will help us keep up with our opponents who are ramping or otherwise if we have trouble drawing lands. Knight of the White Orchard for 2 white is a 2-2 first strike human knight that says when it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than us, we can search our library for a planes card and put it on the battlefield tapped. Cart Cartographer says when it enters the battlefield, we may search our library for a planes card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. And it's a 2-2 for 3 and white. Lazic Valakith's Champion for 2 and a white is a 3-3 legendary Gith Warrior. If one or more 1-1 counters would be put on a creature or planeswalker we control or ourselves. We put that many 1-1 counters of each of those kinds of counter on that permanent or player instead. This is an excellent card for this deck since we're focusing heavy on a 1-1 counter strategy. Between this and Proliferate, it's a way to guarantee we get more 1-1 counters than we would otherwise for our abilities that give them. Lawyer Warhound for 1 in a white is a 3-1 with Vigilance who enters the battlefield if an opponent controls more lands than you. You search your library for planes, put it on the battlefield tapped. Luminarch, Asem uh, Luminarch Aspirant is a 1-1 one, one for 1 in a white that at the beginning of each combat on our turn we put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature we control. So this is really good. We can spread those counters far and wide and, or we can pile them up on one big flyer or hard to block creature. Norn's Choir Master costs 3 and 2 white and is a 5 4 flying first strike creature out of the new March to the Machines Commander stacks. Uh, whenever a commander we control enters the battlefield or attacks, we get to proliferate when this is in play. Uh, usually, we'll get those counters when we play our commander. We're hoping not to have to replay her that often because she will get expensive. We have put quite a bit of ramp in the deck to hedge that off. We can actually make it so Elspeth can attack, because we are running her sword out of the new Capenna set. Palace Jailer, costume 2 white, and is a 2-2 human soldier. When he enters the battlefield, we become the monarch. When he enters the battlefield, we exile target creature and opponent controls, and that creature remains in exile until somebody else becomes the monarch. Scholar of New Horizons for one in white is a 1-1 one, one human scout. We can He enters play with a 1-1 one, one counter on him, that's important. We can tap and remove a 1-1 one, one counter from, oh, sorry, any counter from permanent we control, search our library for a planes card, and reveal it. If an opponent controls more lands than us, we may put that card on the battlefield tapped. If they don't, we put it into our hand. This is beautiful because we're running a lot of things will let us put additional 1-1 one, one counters on things. We can always use this to ramp in this deck. And also, proliferate will let us proliferate the counters that are on it as well. Verge Rangers for two and a white is a first striking 3-3. Three, three. At any time, we may look at the top card of our library. As long as, it can, eh, as long as an opponent has more lands than us, we can play lands from the top of our library. Welcoming Vampire for two and a white is a vampire with flying. She's a 2-3 that says whenever one or more creatures with power two or less enter the battlefield under our control, we draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Even if we have an empty hand, Elspeth will let us trigger this card, so it's very good in our deck. Angelic Intervention for one in a white is an instant that says target creature or planeswalker we control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice till end of turn. If it's a creature, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. It can't be blocked, targeted, dealt damage, enchanted, or equipped by anything with that quality. So, 
This was almost a signature spell for the deck because it's a great protection spell that can protect any of our pieces. You can certainly switch it out if you want. I just chose to put it in the main deck, but it is also from March of the Machines. Swords to Plowshare is a well-known removal spell for one white that lets us exile target creature and an opponent's gonna gain life equal to its toughness. We can also use this to exile a creature we don't control to gain life equal to its toughness in a pinch. Animation module for one says whenever one or more 1-1 one -one counters will be put on a permanent we control, we may pay one. If we do, we create a 1-1 one -one colorless servo artifact token. If we pay three and tap this, we can choose a counter on target permanent or player and give that permanent or player another counter of that kind. So this is like a mini, not quite proliferate. It's very focused. It can certainly help our planeswalkers hit their loyalty a little bit faster. And it lets us make one-one creatures. Luxor Galda's Gift for one is a legendary artifact equipment. It says equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each counter on it. Uh, equipped permanent isn't a planeswalker and is a creature in addition to its other types. We can equip it to a planeswalker for one generic mana, or we can equip it to anything for three generic mana. Shadow Spear is another weapon Elspeth we wielded, so that's why I put it in the deck, is purely for lore. It costs one, the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one trample and lifelink. We pay one permanence our opponent's control, lose hexproof and indestructible till end of turn, and equips for two, so very good. Ozolith costs one, says whenever a creature we control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, we put those counters on Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on our turn, if it, Ozolith has any counters on it, we can move all the counters from it on the target creature. This is a way to take all the woman counters and all the counters we generate and make sure that none of them go to waste just because our creatures died or we got hit with a board wipe or something. So it will allow us to rebuild our most dangerous things very fast. Felidar Retreat for three and a white has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we can create a 2-2 cat beast creature token, or we can put a 1-1 counter on each creature we control. Those creatures gain vigilance till end of turn, which is amazing. Felidar Retreat also made this deck because I'm running quite a bit of cards that go and get us a planes and put it into play. So we can make use of this frequently. Cigar to Summons for four and two white says creatures we control with one one counters on them have base power and toughness four four flying and are angels in addition to their other type. This is just a really great card for this deck. It allows us to turn all of our creatures into angels just like Elspeth kind of wants to do anyway. Together Forever costs two white. It's an enchantment that says when it enters the battlefield, we can put two 1-1 one -one counters, one of each on up to two target creatures. We can pay one when it's in play to choose a creature with a counter on it. When that creature would die this turn, we return their card to its owner's hand instead. And then we're running a bunch of planes, and I'm pretty sure that's the whole deck. Pretty quick, simple, and sweet. I just wanted to do something with this Elspeth while it's new. I'm sure somebody else will break it even harder, but this just seemed fun, fast, and frightening. Well, thank you so much for stopping in, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I hope you enjoyed the deck.